Okay, this video is a little different. I uh, got a request from one of my followers, one of my three followers that's not a family member. Um, uh, Josh Abrams has asked me to do a video and show the process I follow to resurface uh, an old Cooper helmet so that it can be uh, one that would be made into a goalie combo um, and make it look good. Uh, some of these older helmets are pretty scuffed up and scratched and so on and I've been able to uh, resurface some that are real bad and make them look real good. Uh, a couple examples and it's gonna be really hard to show the difference on video so I do have some photos I'll put in here. Um, this is a green <clears throat> obviously and you can see it's it's high gloss shiny and consistent color throughout and then I have a blue one that um, this one was really really in poor condition and now it's nice and smooth it's glossy all the color has come back all the fade is gone from it um, and I actually redid the graphics on this one as well and um, it's one of my favorites actually I really brought that one back from the dead uh, so Josh has so kindly sent me a uh, I want to call it a donor helmet but I'm shipping it back to him afterwards so uh, he has sent me a red SK2000 large and again this isn't going to show as well because I have a great big shiny bright light up there um, so you're, you're going to get a glare and a shine look but this thing is dull it's full of scuff marks um, there's some deep scratches and um, actually a couple of other parts that are a problem on the front um, not exactly sure how this will turn out but there is a there's a I don't know what it is there's like a, a, a bad spot there and a little bit of a nick you can see um, here's the interesting thing these helmets are made from uh, HDPE plastic and I've tried a lot of different things but the only thing that really glues HDPE plastic is more HDPE plastic um, and that's sort of the process I follow here to some degree so uh, we're gonna see if we can fix up this front a little bit um, using some of the method that we're gonna use here. Uh, one thing important is that you start with a clean helmet. I have not yet done this process on a helmet that has good um, screened logos and graphics on it. I don't think that would be a good idea. I think you would probably end up blurring those graphics if you did this. In this case, there was really nothing left, so I just made sure to get rid of the last little remnants of the Cooper name that was on there when I cleaned it. Um, cleaning it, some people just use soap and water, whatever. Uh, I use what's called orange oxy. It's, it's just a mild oxy uh, citrus cleaner. I use a blue uh, Scotch-Brite pad, not a green. Green will scratch the heck out of your helmet terribly, and you won't be able to fix that very well. Uh, the blue is like a non-scratch. It will dull an area if you rub too long. It doesn't really scratch it up, but it'll make it even more dull and, and different and noticeable. Um, and then just a rag to wipe it clean and let it dry really well. Uh, as far as this process goes, there's only a few things you need. Um, first is a heat gun. Um, don't think a hair dryer will do it because it won't get hot enough and intense enough and it's all a lot about the way you use the heat gun and I'll show that in the video and uh, additionally there is um, I use I've done it both ways um, I use another shell as a mold I don't have it here in front of me um, so I'll grab that right now and then I'll I'll show you Okay, so I have actually two extra shells I use for this. Um, someday I'll probably end up creating another combo out of these, and then I don't know what I'll do. Uh, I have a large front and back, and I have a small front and back. Um, 
I'm not going to show a video of a full refurbish. Uh, this video was really strictly just to show how I resurface the outer surface of the, of the shell itself um, to bring back the shine, the gloss, and the even coloring. We'll start with, uh, we're going to start with the back half of the shell because the front's going to need some work that I'm going to have to myself experiment a little bit with. Basically, the concept here is that with HDPE, the uh, outer like micro layer of this shell is going to melt. And as soon as we start seeing it melt, we I do what I call walk the heat and just keep that, that surface melting happening. It's just a micro layer, but what happens is that micro layer smooths itself out and fills a lot of those, especially the small scuffs and scratches. Deep scratches, there's really not a whole lot you can do about that. I have some ideas that I'm going to play with in the future and I may do another video. Um, but that requires some supplies that are sometimes expensive to come by. And um, I don't have that kind of stuff right now. Everything I have is, is usable and good quality. So I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that kind of experiment with Josh's shell here. So um, there are some deep scratches on the back of this that may not touch up, but the off coloring around the edge, the, the that kind of stuff will blend away. I'm going to uh, move these other combos out of the way, adjust the camera, and then uh, start showing the process. All right. So the process with the heat gun is to first of all not hold it super close don't do that you've got to stay um, you know four to six inches maybe away you'll probably see me get a little closer here and there you want to start by warming the entire shell uh, you just move it around you gotta be careful because you'll burn your hand on this really easy sometimes I forget and I have my hand there and I'll move the, the heat gun over top it's not fun um, so, uh, hopefully this will show well, and we'll see. Again, right now, I'm, I'm, my intent here is to warm the whole thing. It'll hold the warmth really well, but that'll make it uh, easier to get this thing to resurface to micro melt, whatever you want to call it. I don't know the fancy words for this stuff. Moving this around and fanning it like this just stops you from ever holding it still. If you hold it in one spot for too long, you will melt a hole right through that shell. And then it's useless at that point. want to point something out on the back half of the shell. You want to be pretty careful right here. Oops. Right here. These uh these little ridges and are the teeth for the adjustments and if you heat that too much and get that to melt, uh you'll round those off and you won't get as good a bite when you're adjusting the helmet. Um again for me, I only do this for my own use and so I haven't worried about that so much because I know exactly where I adjust these things and I don't I don't move them around after that so uh, I'm not worried about the, all the adjustability at some point um, but it, that being said I haven't really melted them away either so Okay, it's already starting back here on the neck area. You gotta be careful that you don't get fixated on like one little scratch or something. If you do that, you'll heat that spot too much.
you can always let it cool and go back over it again. Okay, I'm gonna stop it and show you. It's a little hot, but I think you can see there's quite a gloss across the back of the neck now. Okay, I just switched this because this was winging out at the neck. And by switching it over, you can see that my outer shell is now holding my inner shell to form. Um, that will, uh, I'm gonna let that cool a bit so that it doesn't continue to warp. So I'm just gonna leave that set for a few minutes and let it cool off. You can even sandwich the shells just like that to help hold the shape as well. Whatever you think it's gonna take to not let that thing get mushy and out of shape. Um, there's sometimes some minor uh, flaring, uh, oftentimes on these wings right here uh, that hold the, the J-hook. Um, sometimes those will flare out just a little bit, but the whole fact of assembling it puts it, you know, brings them, brings them back where they belong. Um, and I don't, I do the same type of thing, sandwich it on the shell uh, with those, but it's not as big a deal. I think the thing I've learned that's the hardest thing to deal with is if this, if this piece here crowns out instead of staying flat at the top, if that crowns out, that's the hardest thing to deal with because the, the shell won't go back together the right way. There was a sticker back here and uh, I did clean it all off, but I think the I think the glue that was on it before has like discolored the the little section. So Josh might end up having to put another sticker across the back of there. This was the uh, the warning hockey is a dangerous sport sticker. So I'm comfortable that that's cool enough it's not reshaping itself anymore. And I'm gonna move on with warming it again and get another section going. So again, to help stop the crowning effect, don't do the whole top at once. You'll cause deforming. I've done this section right here and a little bit of the back and I'm gonna hold it there. And in this case, I'm actually gonna clamp this side down because it's not hot, it's not melty. I'm not gonna make any marks in the plastic, but that's gonna help hold the shape better as it cools off a bit. Um, I may even switch that around first and then put the other side on the inside, the other shell. Yeah, just like that. Still really hot, hard to touch. But like that, I can clamp this and get it to keep its shape. So you'll see clamping it is helping hold the shape of that shell because it's it's a little soft there. <clears throat> Need to let that sit for a few minutes at least, um, which will allow it to cool enough that it's not trying to deform itself. It doesn't hurt to have a few more clamps. All right, that's been long enough.
Looking good. Next section. Again, just going to let it sit, cool off some. Um, at this point on this shell, I have this section right across here to do. Uh, there's a couple bigger scratches over here I might hit again. There's a scuff mark up here I want to hit one more time, and probably this section right here because i that's where I joined my two. Um, um, this section is where I joined my two heating um, passes. So I want to make sure that it doesn't look like there's a seam there. Uh, it's actually the next day. I didn't realize that it was like midnight or something when I started that last night. And while I was waiting for this part to cool, I started to doze off. So I just simply went to bed. So now we have the back of the neck completed. We have this area here completed, over here completed, most of straight across the back, but again, I don't know if this will show. You can tell how I, it shows right in here how I came from this side and this side separately. There's like a little bit of, uh, you know, almost dullness that comes into a shape right there. So I'm going to make sure I hit that again and work my way up into the, into this part of it. Um, that'll be next, and maybe this time I'll be able to do an, uh, some video with my camera at the same time as it starts to change. And if I can, that'll let me uh, show it a little better, the effect that it has as it's doing it. So I'm going to give that a try. May, I may try to go over top of this scratch over here again. Um, again, without, like the last thing you want to do is melt a spot, so you got to be really careful. You can't get fixated on any one of these big marks, they're just not going to come out. that cool for a little bit. Move on to the front shell. I know right off the bat that this uh, this little area right here is not going to come out very well. I mean, it'll obviously be no worse looking. I'm going to try to heat just that little bit of a peel there uh, and then press it down in and see if we can get it to kind of glue itself closed rather than have a little nick there. I'm going to do this very specifically first. Yeah, that glued right down in. That sealed itself right down in that hole. I mean, almost immediately upon putting the heat on it, it was such a thin little shaving that it started to 
uh, soften and look liquidy. So I was able to press that down in and fill the hole in. It's still a little rough spot, but at least it's not a little hole now. Um, I am tempted to try to find something to fill this little spot with. This front lip right here because that is always covered and there's no structure there that's actually kind of the thinnest spot. Don't worry Josh, I won't ruin it. Okay, all I've done there is try to achieve some shavings. This, this right here is kind of a divot a gouge mark. And I want to try to fill that a little bit. So some very, very fine shavings here from the inside of that lip. Uh, I'm just going to set them in the hole. That's cooling off enough for me to try smoothing again. Um, okay, remembering the front part of this is not going to be visible at all, really. It's hidden by the other side of the shell. I think I'm going to go over this one quick time evenly the entire thing instead of in pieces this time, which will smooth it all out. Um, other than that, it, it actually looks pretty good already. So, just go one time over it. <clears throat> this time, I'm going to let this one dry on the outside of this shell to hold its shape. And then, uh, there's going to be a little bit of winging out back here. Um, maybe a little bit of uh, reshaping going on as it cools but um, it's not it's not the resurfacing part of this that causes that to happen it's the overall warming of the plastic that causes that to happen and so I'm trying to keep the best finish I can on this um, so I'm gonna let it cool like this then I'll swap these two shells so the white is on the outside and do some warming from the inside just to warm the plastic so that I can clamp it to the to the white shell and get it to hold and then that way I'm not affecting this as it cools where it was wet. So I'm going to set that out of the way for probably 20 minutes now. I don't think that's going to get any better than it was. And I'm going to have to address this now. I think what we're going to do is wet sand this a little bit to try to smooth it out. I want this to end up looking as, you know, flat surfaced as I can. This is uh, thousand grit paper, wet or dry, and in this case, preferably wet, you'll get less sanding marks, even though it is thousand grit. It won't leave much mark if it does. Okay, I'm trying to slightly, uh, not slightly, this is a 220 grit, to see if I can't compensate for those divots a little bit. If anything, just to smooth out this area a little bit, to make less noticeable marks, it'll look a lot better in the finish.
Yeah, it's a lot better now. There's just, it's not a, it doesn't look all chewed up now. Now it just looks like a bunch of tiny little marks. So I'll probably do a little more on that. Oh my, that's much better. <clears throat> a little bit of a spot you can see I sanded, but the chunky hole is, for the most part, gone. Just a couple little puck marks there, puck marks. See what happens when I warm it a bit, all by itself. So I'm probably going to uh, hit that spot once or twice all by itself and let it cool, do it again, let it cool. And hopefully what will happen there is that will help uh, give that spot a little bit of extra micro melting to fill in the sanded area without me overheating it one time while I'm doing everything else, which could cause it to misshape. So I'll let that cool a little bit, do that little area again, um, and then see how bad the sanding mar marks show. And if they're pretty well all gone, which they pretty quickly did, um, I think one more time we'll probably even it out. Then I'll just start doing the whole half shell. In the meantime, this is nice and cool and actually really well held its shape. I always compare it little flattened out so now it's cool it's all one surface we'll drop it down inside of here which will squeeze it into shape and we'll just warm it enough to get it to stay that shape inside of here and we'll just uh, throw some cooling clamps on here Again, we'll just set that aside, let it cool, hit this one more time. That's the area I had sanded, repaired and sanded, filled the hole. The hole's a little, it still shows up, there's still some pock mark, pock marks there, little divots, but it's not a chewed up spot anymore. I don't even know, it looked like, I can't even figure out what could have happened there. Something like a screw had gouged into it and tore it up or something. Now I've evened out where the sanding marks were, so I think we're going to be good after this to keep moving. So far, other than not including the cleaning time, prep time on this, because um, there were some, some really badly frozen screws that I had to deal with. Um, cutting out, drilling out. Uh, that was an adventure. Those were the most difficult screws I've ever dealt with on any of my masks that I've worked on or, or combos. Um, anyway, so besides the tear down and clean up of all of that and cleaning the shell, I've probably got, I think it's probably about an hour into it right now. Um, and some of that's because I'm having to talk to the camera and describe what I'm doing and pay attention. I mean, I don't want things to go horribly wrong on film. So, uh, it overall doesn't take, I don't think that long, you know, but again, if, if it comes to you looking really scuffy and dull and scratchy and just overall blah looking, um, and you can put an hour and a half into it, and it looks really good. It's not going to look brand new, but it's going to look really good. Then, hey, it's an hour and a half of your time to do something cool with a helmet that you can then turn into a combo. And guess what? They don't make these anymore. So you, uh, you're you making it last longer. All right. It's cool enough. We'll get back down here. Same process. Uh, 
just to say this is the part you have to be really careful with these wings right here these these are thinner there's no structure to them um, they have this little bit of a folded edge right here on the front let me get my pointer a little bit of a folded edge right here which is their only structure uh, other than that these will try to wing in they'll try to curl out uh, either way you, you want to watch that and then we'll clamp that down later and warm it again like we did with the other shell. I'm going to stop right there for just a minute. I'm only done one side of it. Um, you can already tell that this is trying to wing out a little bit. We're going to deal with that later with the mold. Alright, I'm going to finish this side of it. Okay, for right now I'm going to let that cool without anything on it. Um, again, just like I did with the other shell, we'll reshape this one um, inside the other uh, the other white shell to uh, hold it. But right now we're just working on getting the surface to dry smooth. Um, you notice after I started back up again, I came back across because where you've done this one and let it cool and then did this one, sometimes there's a visible line between them. So just kind of like go back over it one time and uh, that evens it out. And I can see a little spot I missed right there probably. Probably shouldn't get fixated on any of that. But that was a pretty big uh, spot. So I just did this whole little section here, which is all a visible line um, to even it out. <clears throat> there is a big scratch across here. There's Without fill material, there's nothing you can do about that. Still too hot to touch. But the surface is dried. I'm going to do it one more time, I'm sure, here. Um, the surface isn't soft and tacky or anything. It's just really hot. I'll do it one more time. And then uh, I might even go ahead this time and put it over top of the shell. one more time here maybe it'll fill in a little more and then we'll do the then we'll put it inside and we'll end up clamping these and get them back into shape okay nice and even and smooth again and uh, I'm gonna remove this shell so we don't deform it it's hot but it's not squishy and bendable and flexible um, once this cools to where it's touchable, I'll clamp it on the inside of this one and I'll clamp specifically these wings really well and the back edge um, and we'll just warm the inside of this an extra time. So I'll slide this out of the way for right now. Take a look at this piece. May have to warm this one again just if we're not happy with the shape. <clears throat> there's a little bit, it'll flex back into shape as you assemble it, but there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of a wrong curve right here. Sometimes you just work it a little bit and it goes right back to what it was supposed to be. Otherwise, we'll just clamp it in there and warm the inside again. Um, but other than that, I think it actually looks good right now. The telltale sign is when you go to put it all together. If there's something really badly out of shape, it doesn't like to go back together very well. If it's slightly shaped different, you can deal with that. That's not a problem. Um, but you can also do this. Let's see if I can show this on the camera. The neck shape is correct. It's really hard to figure out how to do this while I look at the camera and line up two pieces. The, the curve of the neck is the right way. 
the spread of the adjustment wings is just right. And the shape of the crown is perfect. So that, sh that half shell is done. And uh, it doesn't look perfect, but it looks a whole lot better than it did. And I'm really hoping that shows up in the photos that I'm gonna do because I don't think it necessarily relays very well with a great big bright light above me shining on plastic um, and giving a glare and so on. But um, by all, no means does this look brand new. This doesn't look right out of a package, but boy does it look a lot better. There's no uneven scuff marks anywhere. There's still some, uh, some, there's my little tool again. There's still some bigger gouges you might see there, um, right here, right here. Nothing I can do about those really, like I said, unless I fill them. It's a good size um, thin scratch here that was bigger and it closed in some. Overall though, the, the look of it is so much more even and clean. I love this. I love how that comes out every time. Um, so we're done with the back shell for now. I will get those out of my way. Our front shell is just warm and touchable now, meaning the surface dried and hardened. Again, really nice, even look to it. Uh, this is a lot less noticeable. It was all chewed up and thin and faded looking. Um, it's a lot less noticeable now. It just looks like some little pock marks. There's still a little nick there that didn't fill very well. Um, big gouge right here. Not super deep, but wide. Can't do anything about that. Uh, now I need to clamp it inside of here and we'll warm the inside, which won't affect the outside layer that we just cleaned up. So I'm gonna clamp it first this time and really just heat this intersection and the uh, the upper parts, which in this view to me is the bottom part of these, which will shape them. Soften them up, up enough that the, as they dry, the clamps will hold them. Um, once again, you do want to be careful. I should point this out. Do be careful here. These are your adjusters. Um, the little tiny marks there are what the teeth that bite into the other side of the shell for size adjustment. I didn't have really any misshapen um, effect on this one. I did uh, just the just the ear wings were really the, what was affected, so that's really all I need to straighten. So this will take about 10 minutes or so to cool down. Okay, unclamp, still a little bit warm, not too bad though, and we got our uh, J-hook wings, ear wings back, nice and uh, a little wide, still a little warm, and probably bring that in just by shaping it. They're a little wide, but that's the other nice thing about this piece is that um, you can that'll adjust as you screw everything all together a little bit. But um, so that check this lines right up. That tells us our arc is good. Side by side, back to back, they line right up. So I'm just gonna bring these, point them in a little bit. It's still warm enough that this is affecting it without, you gotta be careful, don't break it, don't snap them. <laughs> uh, but as they dry, as they it's not dry, but as they cool, there, perfect. 
lines right up. Same angle. Yeah. So I'm just going to let that cool a little longer. Um, once it's cool, I'll snap a couple photos of it and then put the two pieces together and take some pictures. And then hopefully the pictures at the end of this will show the, uh, the difference. Uh, something to know about this. When you go to reassemble, when you were doing all of this, you re -hold, you resurface the inside of these holes everywhere. Um, you will have to probably, to get your screws to fit through, here's an old rusty one, but in order to get that to fit through, oh, that one did. Some of these holes may need to be drilled out. There, the center hole doesn't fit. Um, And you just need to get, I, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head because I don't have one in here, what size that drill, that drill would be. It's got to be exact and you just want to go very slow with like a battery screw gun drill. Um, very slow through there. Just enough to open the hole back up to slide this in. If it goes in a little snug, that's great. You don't want it loose and sloppy anyway. Well there, that one fit through. Um, so it's just a matter of you know, checking all the holes to make sure. Do do all the check all the holes before you start assembling, so you don't have to try to drill it when you're half assembled. But that whole process of you know heating the surface and stuff, it does. You are heating the inside of those holes while you do it, so you've got to check that. All right. I'll uh, take a few pictures and then just share a few final thoughts about this. Okay. Here's my thoughts on this project. The first time I did it, I was really worried I would make a mistake. Um, I evolved a little bit by using the other helmet as mold. That's why I don't have one more fully assembled SK combo, because I've keep, kept that one aside. Um, this is definitely not for, I guess you call it the faint of heart. If you're emotionally attached to that piece of plastic might not be something you want to do. There is, there is a chance. I mean, I've, I've specifically melted a piece on purpose just to get it out of my system. Uh, I used a HH3000 or whatever it is, the, uh, a different, more modern helmet. Um, and I wanted to kind of see what kind of time it takes holding still for that to happen. Uh, so while I'm willing to do this as a, a um, a demo to video f for the YouTube channel um, for Josh. I'm uh, so far not willing to do it to this particular helmet, um, which could really use it. I don't, I don't know if that'll show, but you can see some pretty scuffed up areas. However, this is a pretty hard to come by um, Navy. Um, SK2000 um, and I just haven't had it in my heart to disassemble and try to do the process to this one yet. I like that it still has its certification sticker and warning sticker and original graphics. Um, I kind of like that. It's got a nice little skate cut right across the top there. I like the character that adds, and uh, I just haven't had it in me to do. So, um, again, it's probably about an hour and a half process, and you got to learn to live with some minor flaws that that could happen. I mean, you're not you're not weakening the structure of the helmet at all. If anything, you may actually be hardening it. Um, HDP HDPE plastic literally the only thing that glues it together that I've come across that works 100% of the time is more HDPE plastic. If you do some Googling, you'll see they make these giant uh, like um, sewage pipes and whatnot. I, I, don't, I don't know what they transfer through it, but I mean huge pipes out of this kind of plastic. And there's an actual like truck bed machine that um, they take the two pieces of pipe and they put it close together in a, 
a heating element comes down and they both press against that and it melts a layer of the edges and then that thing slides up out of the way and they press these together with pressure and that's how they make seams. Um, it's not PVC where you can get PVC glue that does the melting effect for you to glue them together. Uh, so um, you're not you're not hurting it structurally in those pipes. That is the strongest part of those pipes too. It's, so you're not hurting it unless you bur mess it up and melt it. Um, slight deformities in the shaping of it, especially on the back shell. The back shell seems to be the weakest. Um, sometimes happen. It's not always exactly the same as it started. This particular one came out really well. Um, in fact, I. I tend to be particular about that and go back over and do the things I need to do to make it that way. Um, but a lot of that, especially if it's in the crown, gets fixed when you reassemble your bucket and uh, put it all back together and whatnot. So uh, the other thing is on the front shell, a lot of times this section right here will tend to have a flattened effect. Um, you can warm it slightly and work it, press it with your thumbs and get it back into shape. You do a little bit at a time as you're in the reassembly process and it'll fit all back together. This one came out really well. I didn't have any deformity issues that I couldn't deal with. The ear wings always try to flare out. You, there's nothing you can do about that. There's no structure to those at all. Um, nothing to hold them into shape. There's, they're just hanging out there on their own. So you do what I did and you put it on the on the mold bucket and uh, the mold shell and uh, clamp it and warm it from the inside, let it sit and as it cools and hardens it'll go back right into shape. Um, and if you still have a little bit you can again warm it and work them by hand until you get them right where you want them and then let it sit and as it cools it'll go right back into shape. I didn't do anything with the interior of these, you can see uh, this one's pretty scuffed up on the inside of the hole there. That was from one of the really badly rusted screws. But, uh, and again, I don't, on video, I don't know if this actually shows. So I'm hoping the photos will show the difference and then uh, I'm gonna ship this back to Josh and then he can he can talk about how great it came out or, or how disappointed he was in the process. I don't know, I, I'm not sure what the expectation was, but I know for me, the couple I've done, it was a world of difference. They were they were really poor condition um, and very poor coloring because when you get scuffs you get dull satin finish look instead of a higher gloss look and you get uneven coloring. Um, that's the process. Use at your own risk. <laughs>